this Resurrection Sunday. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is the day that we as believers celebrate the fact that he not only gave his life as a ransom for our sin, but he didn't stay in that grave. He arose. Amen. Come on, you can do better than that. Are you thankful to be in the house of the Lord? <laughs> I love what Joel says, to blow the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm in the holy hills. Amen. For the day of the Lord is coming and it is at hand. And I believe that. We're going to celebrate that not only he arose, but he is coming back. Do you believe that? We're going to sound the alarm as a celebration and we are here to worship him and bless his holy name. Come on, right. The Lord is here. Feel it in the atmosphere. Oh, the presence of the Lord is here. I said the presence of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Oh, the Spirit of the Lord is here. I feel it in the The Lord is here. Oh, the Spirit of the Lord is here. Oh, the power of the Lord is here. Oh, the power of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere. Oh, the power of the Lord is here. I said the power of the Lord. Is he?
because in his presence is everything I need. His presence is truly heaven. Amen. There is nobody like you, Jesus, and we bless your holy name today, Father. How we are so grateful, God, for what this day represents to us. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Who is like you, Lord? love and beauty in this world nothing in this world will satisfy nothing in this world hallelujah Jesus you're the cup that won't run dry
presence is everything. Amen. Nothing like his presence. Nothing like his presence. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Your presence is heaven to me. Oh, oh, oh. 
Hallelujah. His presence makes all the difference. Amen. I love Easter and what it means to us. Although we celebrate Him all the time, it's just that wonderful time of year we can take the extra effort to praise Him for the work that He did on the cross. Amen. 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 That cross that makes all the difference. Amen. I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling, I will cling. what he has. That's Let's right. sing that verse that says, Amen. to the old rugged cross, I want to be true to you, Jesus. I will never be true. It's shame and reproach that be read. Then he'll call you turn around and tell somebody that you are happy to see them in the house of the Lord today. We bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Lights. Your presence a refuge to me where I am on
picking up all the leftover eggs how much effort it is so <laughs> it, they put a lot into that and I really appreciate that especially um, from a parent standpoint so um, tonight no choir practice this is Easter. <laughs> hey now <laughs> a little bit too excited about that <laughs> and the youth service 
um, we're not having a youth service th tonight either, so that's kind of sad because I know you guys have a good time. Um, we still, though, we still need volunteers to bring refreshments for these kids. I, when I did the youth group, I will tell you this, I had them at my house. I still have like 60 red cups underneath my porch from two years ago because they, they ate everything in the house. So please volunteer to bring something for them. Um, women's ministry is this Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Um, I don't know any other information other than that. So be here at 7 o'clock. They will feed you here. Um, so let's go ahead and we're going to do our tithes and offerings proclamation here. If you'll stand up with me. Let's say it like you mean it. How many's blood been blessed this week? Financially, Amen. jobs, Amen. bills paid off. All right, give the glory to God. Okay, are you ready? As we tithe and give offerings, we believe that we receive from God jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, Bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received, gifts and surprises, checks in the mail, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my needs, that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. sing for you today and just want you to be blessed by our worship to the Lord and hope that you will be drawn into his presence he tells us in his word that when we lift him up he will draw all men into himself and that's our desire and that is our prayer today that you will be drawn into his presence closer and closer and closer hallelujah thank you Jesus Not a word was heard at the tomb that day. 
just shuffling soldiers' feet as they guarded the grave. One day, two days, three days had passed. Could it be that Jesus had breathed his last? Could it be that his father had forsaken him, turned his back on his son, despising our sin? All hell seemed to whisper, just forget it, he's dead. Father looked down to his son and said, The earth trembled and the tomb began to shake and like lightning from heaven that old stone was rolled away and as dead men the guard they all stood there and cried as the power of love displayed its
Jesus. Give the Lord a good hand. What an awesome, what an awesome move of God already today. Hallelujah. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. This today is the crowning point of all that he stands for. Yes. Makes us different from all the other religions in the world is the empty tomb. No wonder we celebrate. <laughs> it makes us different. And I, I'm thankful that we're not just one among many. I'm thankful that Jesus said, I am the way, yes. the truth, and the life. And no, Oprah, there's not many ways to God. There's one way to God, and that's through Jesus Christ, His only Son. And I don't mind taking my stand for that. Now there may be come a, there might come a day that you'll be um, not only criticized for that openly, but maybe even be jailed. Uh, you know, because of the freedoms uh, that are being eroded right out from under us and uh, this so-called hate speech and hate crimes that uh, is being propagated in this land. But... You know, I still think that we have a responsibility to lift up the name above all names, the name of wonderful name of Jesus. I want to thank you for being here on this resurrection day. You know, the word Easter is only one time in the entire Bible. Uh, so a much more fitting word would be resurrection day. This is the day we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. The grave could not hold him. He was more powerful than the grave. So thank the Lord for that today. And I do welcome you to the house of the Lord. Thank you for choosing to worship with us. I don't know how many uh, visiting folks we have here. Mostly what I see is our home folk. Uh, but we do have one couple from Pennsylvania that I met back there. And I'm sorry I didn't get their names enough that I can uh, call them out. But they knew who they are. And we're so glad that they chose to worship with us. And Stop and be a part of this worship service today. Amen. I want you to turn with me to Luke chapter 24 as we look to the Word of God today. I'm not interested just in giving you a lot of cute little stories. I'm interested in giving you the Word of God that will last forever. That when everything that we know and see passes away, it's the Word of God that's going to stand forever. Jesus told his disciples, he said, on this, on this rock I will build my church. Right. Now the rock, the rock wasn't Jesus. We usually say it that, but the rock was the word. Yes. He said, uh, on this word that thou art Peter, he said, and upon this rock, the words that I just told you, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. So... When you get all down and out, Tim, when you get all down and out and you feel like that nobody's listening and nothing's being done, you just remember that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. 
And I think that is an important thing for us to remember. In chapter 24, verse 1, I want to read to you, if I may. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. What an incredible statement right there. Because that is proof positive that he was gone. They found not the body. (laughs) See, he had made that claim. Destroy this temple and in three days I'll raise it up. Now they couldn't comprehend that. They thought he was talking about the earthly temple that it had taken several years to build. Of course, he's talking about his own life. You, you kill me, and in three days, I'm coming back to life again. And he had told them over and over. So uh, I, I like how, how the scriptures just lays the mind to rest. They found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Hallelujah. Maybe we could talk about that in regard to church. (laughs) Well, maybe I don't need to comment too much right there. Uh, Brother Hurley would tell the story about some fella died during church and he said they had to move out six rows of people before they found the right one. (laughs) So I'm telling you be excited that we have something to look forward to beyond the grave. I had to sing at the funeral of my oldest brother yesterday. And I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost came down in that place. And we rejoiced and we sent him home with glory in the house. Now the only way we can do that, see, is because of Easter. Because the grave could not hold him. Well, let me finish my my scripture text here. He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. He said, do you remember what what he told you? Saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. What another powerful statement there. I wonder how well we remember his words. Do we just remember them while we're in church? Do we remember them when we get in trouble only? Or are they the very heartbeat of who we are? The words of our Lord every day. Uh, With interest, Rudyard Kipling wrote a book called The Jungle Book. And in, in it, Mowgli is a man cub. And he asked the animals, what's the most feared thing in the jungle? He told them that when two animals meet on a narrow path, that one must step aside and let the other one go first. The animal that steps aside, for no one would be the most feared and greatest animal of all. Mowgli wants to know what kind of animal would that be. One tells him it's an elephant. Another says, no, it's a lion. Finally, the wise old owl exclaims, The most feared thing in the jungle is death. It steps aside for no one. Interesting. Anybody remember in reading the story of Robin Hood when he met little John? And he met him at a log going across a stream. And each one stopped at their end of the log and began to joust back and forth with each other as to who would pass first and who would step aside. 
Because the idea was if you step aside, then you are acknowledging that I'm greater than you are. I'm more powerful than you are. So therefore they argued back and forth and finally they came to blows in the middle of the log. And I believe Robin Hood's the one that fell in the water, if I remember correctly. But the point of the thing is that death usually steps aside for no one. You know, we hear in the news almost daily of certain people who have done certain accomplishments in life and they died. Or someone that we know or that we grew up with or that we've had dealings with from time to time, they died. And notice that it makes no difference whether they're rich or poor. It makes no difference what country they live in. It really makes no difference how much money they have or don't have. Death is that enemy that steps aside for no one except one. That's why at a funeral we don't sorrow as those that have no hope. That's why when we bury our loved ones, We don't do it with a feeling of despair and finality that we will never see them again. But we rather approach that as just the next step that is necessary for us to get out of this old world and get to the next one. Hallelujah. What a wonderful thing it is today to realize the importance of the resurrection. No, it is not just another day. And yes, it is extremely important that we celebrate this day of all days. Hallelujah. Because it is that one thing that separates us from everything else in the whole wide world. There are hundreds of other religions. There are many, many other different ways that people follow lines of thought and philosophies and and things that they have in their mind. They put their faith in Muhammad and they put their faith in Buddha and Confucius and literally hundreds of millions of people around the world today follow those three leaders. Muhammad, Confucius, and Buddha. But all three of those died And their bodies are still in their tomb. And yet hundreds of millions of people are following them. And even though they were great teachers and their teachings have influenced all these people, yet those great leaders offer nothing beyond the grave. But Jesus proved that he was more than a good teacher. Not just a teacher, (laughs) but a teacher who came to conquer death once and for all. And now, hallelujah, we don't have to fear because someone dies. We know it is a temporary interruption. And in a little while, if we are a child of God, we're going to be reunited together with them in heaven. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, and comfort one another with these words. Glory to God. It guarantees the absolute validity that Jesus is exactly who he said he was. There were a lot of imposters in that day. And even Jesus said that in the latter days, and even the Apostle Paul said that even many antichrists would come. And there would come those that would say, Lo, I am Christ, follow me. And in the Gospels, he said, there would be those that would say, Here is Christ or there is Christ, follow him. But Jesus says, Don't be fooled. Don't let yourself be caught up in that kind of thinking. There is only one way to God. Jesus said, I am the door to the sheepfold. And no one can get into the sheepfold unless he comes through the door. Hallelujah. I'm glad I've been to Calvary. I'm glad I can say I've seen the Lord. Hallelujah. 
And I'm excited today because this old world is not going to be the end of the story. It is only the real beginning of a life that will exceed anything that we could ever possibly imagine. I read an interesting article this week. You may not ever have heard of Sir Lionel Lucku, who was an English defense attorney. You may not have ever heard his name. But according to the Guinness Book of World Records, he is the most successful trial lawyer ever. He had 245 successful murder defenses in a row. 245. That's a lot of them. If you were a murder suspect, you want to call Sir Lionel Lucku to be your attorney. Even in the Perry Mason television series, after he had won 70 cases in a row, the producers of the show decided they needed to let him lose a case because no one would really want someone who won every one of them. He he just wouldn't be very believable because they thought he had to fail sometimes. Well, I want to tell you I serve somebody today who never failed. I want to tell you that I have to choose to pattern my life after someone who doesn't know failure. He won every battle. He overcome everything that Satan ever threw against him. He overcame it all. When the scribes and Pharisees and the doctors of the law would try to trip him up, they never succeeded, not the first time. He was always successful and he won every case. And then at the very end, when Satan thought he had finally stopped him and he hung him on an old rugged cross, even then he won that case also and is now seated at the right of hand of God the Father in the name of Jesus I bless him today he is worthy 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 to be praised hallelujah it was interesting I read about the conversion of a Muslim in Africa somebody asked him said I'm just interested why you would convert to Christianity from being a Muslim. These are his words. He said, well, it's like this. Suppose you were going down the road and suddenly the road forked in two directions and you didn't know which way to go. And there at the fork in the road were two men, one dead and one alive. Which one would you ask which way to go? Hello? I am not interested in denigrating or putting down anybody. But why we can't see that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, why we can't see that we are different from all of the rest of the religions in the world is all is just beyond me. You can go to the graves of these other famous leaders. You can stand there at the tomb and the tomb is sealed. They're not going to let you see inside because there would be an embalmed body there or bones or or something to let you know that that great, great leader was there and is still there. But you see, way back in 1976, I went into the garden tomb. I walked in there. And I can tell you that the tomb is empty. He is not there. He is gone. Hallelujah. He's different from all of the other great leaders in the world. And I choose to follow him. And I do it without apology. Glory to God. I do not intend to ever get to the place that I have to apologize for being a Christian. And as I I get older, I get bolder. I feel like at some point in life, you ought to get to the place that you got a right to just say it and say it in love, but say it because it's the truth. I used to be around people that would use ugly words and I would just kind of bow my head and walk away. 
now I just say then I don't appreciate you as you would blaspheme the name of the God that I serve and Jesus to whom I have pledged my life. And I would appreciate it if you would honor me because I'm going to honor you, but I don't like that kind of language. And you know what? I believe we're doing people a favor if we help them to understand that we don't live by the set of rules that they live by. Glory to God. I will serve him because I love him. Glory to God. There are three different schools of thought when it comes to Jesus and the resurrection. When you ponder the empty tomb and the very fact that no one has ever been able to produce a body. (laughs) So we know he came out of the grave. And there are just many that would say that, well, he didn't really die on the cross. That's the first thought here. He didn't really die. He was severely wounded. And he didn't really die. So when they took him down off the cross and they put him in that tomb, the cool air of the tomb revived him because lying there just in an unconscious condition but not being dead, the coolness of the atmosphere there just kind of brought him down, brought him back to life. That's called the swoon theory. And it is exactly that. It's a theory. You know, uh, he came back once he got inside that cool tomb. It's amazing to me that uh, not only would Jesus have survived the crucifixion, he would have to untangle himself from about 70 pounds of cloth that was wrapped around him and was anointed with spices. He would have to move a huge boulder that was a road to the tomb. He would also have to uh, overpower a bunch of armed guards uh, in order to come out of there. So that kind of theory just simply does not hold water. It is remarkable to me the lengths that we will go to to try to disprove what would be so easy just to believe what the Bible says. But yet we will fall all over ourselves to try to prove that it isn't so. If we use the same amount of energy and the same amount of time to try to study the Word and find out what it really says, we could be a nation of powerful people. And I'm telling you, the devil wouldn't stand a chance anywhere in anybody's home. The second the second theory is here that the disciples stole the body of Jesus. That they came at the night time when the soldiers were sleeping and stole it. Well, we know that happened. Uh, uh, well, it happened in this way. Matthew 28, verse 12, says that the chief priest of the Sanhedrin dis- devised a plan. They gave some Roman soldiers a large sum of money telling them, here's what you're to say. His disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. And Matthew chapter 28 verse 15 says, the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. So this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this day. The Sanhedrin said, look, The last thing we need is for word to get out that this man called Jesus actually arose from the grave. We will pay you a large sum of money, you Roman soldiers, if you will say the disciples came and stole his body while we were asleep. Now if you know anything about the Roman soldiers you know that is an absolute impossibility. Number one, they were the most well-trained soldiers in the world. So 12 men who were not trained to be fighters wouldn't stand a chance to steal him to start with. Secondly, any soldier who fell asleep on the job would have to face the death penalty and would have to give their life in return for the prisoner 
that was allowed to escape. There's just too many holes in that kind of theory. <laughs> Why don't we just believe the truth and let's get it over with? They say, well, you know, tell anything. Just, just tell anything. It amazes me how we're telling just about anything except the story of our Redeemer. We're telling all kinds of stuff that will make us feel good. It is incredible to me. You can go into many places today that we call houses of worship. And the lessons that are going on is more about self-esteem and more about discovering the champion in you and discovering the God that is in you. That's a dangerous cycle. That's a dangerous thing from the perspective that we get to the place that we believe that we are the one to be praised and we don't give glory to the living God where it belongs. The Bible tells us that man is hopelessly lost and on his way to destruction without the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, to cleanse us from our sins today. And we need to make that voice more strong and more clear than it has ever been before. That without Jesus, I don't stand a chance. Without that old rugged cross, without the blood that was shed, I am hopelessly lost. I cannot give enough money to charities to be saved. I cannot help enough little ladies across the street to get saved. I cannot do enough things on my own to be saved. The Word says, For by grace are we saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God not of works, lest any man should boast. That's why I tell people, throw yourself at the foot of that old rugged cross and find in the Lord Jesus Christ everything that you could never be on your own. You need to find it in Him because He is the one. He is the one. That guard with that, that, that uh, tomb that day is heavily guarded. The third theory was that the disciples were just hallucinating. They just thought they saw him. After he arose, you know, and he appeared to them on several occasions, well, they were just so overcome in their grief, you know, that they were just uh, uh, making things up. Their mind thought they were seeing things. So in their hallucinations, they created the fact that Jesus had actually risen from the dead. Do you see how hard we're trying to keep from believing what thus saith the word of the Lord? Can you see what lengths we go to to keep from believing the Bible? I want you to know, my friend, it is so easy for us to disprove all of that stuff because the Bible teaches us that Jesus appeared to a lot of different people, not just the disciples. In John, in, in John chapter 20, He appeared to Mary Magdalene. The Bible says in Luke 24, the two men were walking on the way to Emmaus and he appeared to them. He appeared to the 12 disciples, Thomas being absent, and then he appeared to them again when Thomas was present and he said, look at me. I like what he said. He said, if you're thinking that your mind is playing tricks on you and your eyes really are not seeing me, he said, look <laughs> and see for yourself, he said, that it is I myself and not another. Put your hands in my hands. Feel. Oh, that's something we've forgotten how to do in this day. Ah, boy. We text everything and we send everything electronically. And we have forgotten the power of the touch and the power of being personal. Jesus said, feel me and see that it is I myself and not another. 
I want to tell you today, this is the kind of relationship that we need in the church today. Not, not just a, not just a, a powerful production as such, but we need to feel the presence of God one more time. We need to feel the mighty move of the Holy Spirit. We need to feel and know that God is real. I can remember as a boy growing up, we'd start singing that old song, my God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. I want to see that again. I want to see people break out just spontaneously singing in the power of God and in the power of the Holy Spirit and sing like my brother Tommy used to pick up that old guitar and sing. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you with arms wide open. He'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. Not only did Jesus appear to those disciples, not only did he appear to Mary Magdalene, not only did he appear to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, but he appeared according to the scriptures to over 5,000 others at one time. Hallelujah. He showed himself alive. Now, these 500 witnesses, these disciples... Are all of them wrong? Somebody actually, Lee Strobel, wrote a book called The Case for Easter. Thought it was interesting. He said, he said, if every person that the Bible identifies as being an eyewitness to Jesus' resurrection, if they were called to the witness stand to be cross-examined, it would take 129 hours to hear the testimony of all of those folks if they only took 15 minutes apiece. In other words, it would take from breakfast on Monday morning until dinner time Friday night, 24 hours a day, non-stop, to bring the witness up on the stand. Did you see Jesus after his resurrection? Yes, sir. I can say without the shadow of a doubt, I saw him. I personally witnessed him. There were so many people that saw him. And from breakfast Monday morning until dinner time Friday night, constantly one right behind the other, 15 minutes apiece. It would take that long for you to hear all of the witnesses. I'm telling you it is a fact of history. I'm telling you it is a fact today, glory to God, that Jesus is alive. The tomb is empty. The grave could not hold him. He overcame death. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I like that song, and because he lives, I can face tomorrow. And because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future. Life is worth the living just because he lives. Glory to God. It's remarkable to me, people who will continue to ignore the Lord and not serve him, knowing that at the end of the journey, he is the only ticket to heaven. And yet we refuse to serve him. We always think it's going to happen to the other guy. The other man's the one that'll have to face that. I'm, I'm doing fine. I'm okay. My family's doing good. Everything's going great. But you know, one of these days, your number's going to turn up. One of these days, your time is coming. You know what? It's going to be so important for you to know that your relationship with the Lord is in order because that's the only thing that's going to count. You can die penniless but you can be wealthy because you have discovered the pearl of great price and he lives inside your heart. I'll tell you how incredibly important it is. The Bible says that when a man 
discovers the pearl of great price. He will sell all that he has and he'll go and buy that field. He'll purchase that field because he knows that in that field is the pearl of great price. And it's worth more than everything else that he owns. And therefore he will gladly give it all up to buy that field. I'm telling you, if you ever really fall in love with Jesus, you are willing to give up everything in your life that's not conducive to serving Him. You give it all up gladly because you found that pearl of great price. What a powerful thing it is to remember. I thought it was interesting Several years ago, Sports Illustrated back in November 2001 put together the 10 greatest comebacks of all time up until that time. (laughs) The number one of all the great, well, let me mention some of the others. Elvis Presley was on there after he did that TV special in 1968 that revived his career when he was almost over. Muhammad Ali He made the list after when he returned from being out of boxing for seven years and reclaimed the world championship. Harry Truman made the list for beating Thomas Dewey. Michael Jordan made the list after he had decided to give up baseball and go back to what he could really play and play basketball. So he made the list. I thought that was interesting. Even even humanity got on the list that after the great black plague of the 14th century, that humanity was able to come back again. But the number one out of all of the editors of Sports Illustrated magazine, November 12, 2001 issue, the greatest comeback of all time, Jesus Christ, A.D. 33, glory to God. Maybe you need to understand that even the world recognizes that He's the greatest comeback of all. Glory to God. The greatest of all. I didn't even have to think long to say that. His is the greatest of all. Now all of us has been to those places in life that we felt like it was just about over for us. Everybody. Life has a way of just, well it happens. It catches you at the most inopportune times or it catches you when things just well they just don't work out like they should and you find yourself just struggling from day to day can you still see the sneering face of the enemy as he just pokes fun at you and says yeah you served that God and look where it got you Yeah, you know, you gave up everything that you could possibly give up to try to be faithful. Look what it has done for you. Can you still still see his sneering face? But I want to tell you, in the midst of all of that, there was a process that God had in motion. There was something that God was putting together in your life to give you a courage and a strength that you had never had before. And now you are able to stand up in the face of that same devil that was laughing and mocking and sneering at you. And you can declare that in Jesus Christ I am free today. I'm free from the fear of tomorrow. I'm free from the guilt of the past. For I've traded my shackles for a glorious song. I'm free, praise the Lord. I'm free at last. Hallelujah. Let's stand together as we get ready to see the Lord and worship Him at the close of this service today. In this the greatest day of all days that we celebrate as men and women of God. The day when we celebrate that Jesus Christ overcame death and hell. I don't fear death. I don't have to fear it. All I have to do is trust in Him who is greater than death. 
You see, he never had to step aside for death to walk by. That's right. He even went to a funeral one day and raised the man up from the funeral. He never stepped aside for death to take its priority over him. He is greater than death. And when that doctor stands over you and declares that life has left your body, I will declare unto you by the authority of God's Word, if you are a child of God, you will breathe your last breath on this life and the next breath will be in heaven in the presence of God. What a joy. I thank God for the old rugged cross. But these people who are wearing a cross around the neck and Jesus is still on the cross, that is not right. right. He is not still on the cross. Brother, the cross is empty. We don't need to wear the crosses with Jesus still on them. We need to wear the cross that is empty. Matter of fact, we can wear the tomb that is empty because it's empty too. That's the way he proved his power over death and hell and the grave. I wonder how many would be in this place today if you'll close your eyes and bow your head with me for a moment. I wonder how many would be in this place today that on this Easter Sunday morning, the last day of March 2013, you can find in your heart and in your life and say, I want to know Jesus Christ as my Savior and my Lord. I'm not real sure about my relationship with God. And I don't want to leave here today like that. Let me tell you, you don't have to. I like that song that I'll I'll cherish the old rugged cross. That's our way of salvation and redemption. If you're here today and you don't know Him as your Savior and Lord, I would like to ask you on this Easter Sunday morning, Would you like to come to Jesus today and receive Him right now as your Savior? I wonder if you'd come today. Join me right here at the front. I'd like to pray with you. I'd like to introduce you to this man called Jesus who will do more for you than anyone has ever been able to do for you. His name is Jesus. Do we have anybody in here today and said, I'm tired of playing around with God. I'm tired of playing games at the foot of the cross like I preached last Sunday. I'm ready to get serious about serving the Lord. Is there anybody in here today? I'm ready to get serious about the Lord in my life. If you will, just come and join me right here and let's pray together. Let's worship. And now I am happy, Lord.
gift could you offer the Lord this morning that you give him your heart when he gave his very best gift for you. We don't want you to leave this place with your needs not being met. There are people here this morning that want to pray with you, so I just hope you'll be obedient to the wooing of the Holy Spirit in your life. Don't miss all that God has. He has a great plan for your life. We bless you, Jesus. Oh, and what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole? What Anybody else in here, don't let this opportunity pass you yes, by. Amen. Some of you haven't been to church since last Easter. Well, you know I'm telling you the truth. I'm not trying to be ugly, I'm just telling you the truth. You may not live to another Easter. That's right. That's right. I wonder if you'd let this be your day. Would you say, I am ready to make a change. I am ready for my life to turn around. I'm tired of playing around with God. I want to get serious. While they sing it one more time, I wonder if you'd come and receive the Lord this morning as your Savior and Lord. Go ahead and sing it again. What? 